So OpenAI just stole the spotlight once again with the release of GPT 4.5. Here's everything you need to know about it. First off, this model is going to be the last of its kind. OpenAI CEO Sam Altman confirmed this in a post on X a few weeks ago, saying we will next ship GPT 4.5, the model we called Orion internally, as our last non-chain of thought model. After that, a top goal for us is to unify O series models and GPT series models by creating systems that can use all our tools, know when to think for a long time or not, and generally be useful for a very wide range of tasks. So we've had the GPT series series models, GPT-3, GPT-4, GPT-4.0, and now GPT-4.5, which are based off the pre-training scaling law, also known as train time compute scaling. The more data and compute you feed the model, the better it performs. But sometime around September of 2024, OpenAI revealed something different, the first of its kind reasoning model known as OpenAI-01. This was an entirely new approach. Instead of feeding the model a ton of high quality data to make it better, they simply allowed the model time to think before generating an answer. And they found that the more time they gave the model to think for any specific query or task, the better it performed. This is what's called test time compute scaling, the second major breakthrough in AI scaling laws. Now, while scaling pre-training and scaling thinking are two different dimensions of improvement, as OpenAI researcher Noam Brown stated, he also mentions that they are complementary, not in competition. So GPT-4.5 will be the last model of the pre-training scaling era, and O3 will likely be the last model of the thinking scaling era. OpenAI wants to combine these two scaling laws and create a hybrid reasoning model that just handles everything. Anthropic actually beat them to the punch on this with the release of Claude 3.7 Sonnet only a few days ago. Claude 3.7 Sonnet is both a reasoning model and a standard LLM. It is a hybrid reasoner as they call it. So it'll definitely be interesting to see how OpenAI responds with GPT-5. But we're not here to talk about GPT-5 just yet. Even though GPT-4.5 isn't a reasoning model, it's still incredibly impressive and comes with its own specific strengths. It is OpenAI's largest ever model and represents a step forward in scale scaling up pre-training and post-training. They state here, early testing shows that interacting with GPT 4.5 feels more natural. Its broader knowledge base, improved ability to follow user intent, and greater EQ, emotional intelligence, make it useful for tasks like improving writing, programming, and solving practical problems. We also expect it to hallucinate less. So they then touch on the two scaling laws that we just talked about. We advance AI capabilities by scaling two complementary paradigms, unsupervised learning, which is referring to pre-training scaling, and reasoning. These represent two axes of intelligence. Scaling reasoning teaches models to think and produce a chain of thought before they respond, allowing them to tackle complex STEM or logic problems. Models like OpenAI 01 and OpenAI 03 Mini advance this paradigm. Unsupervised learning, on the other hand, increases world model accuracy and intuition. GPT 4.5 is an example of scaling unsupervised learning by scaling up compute and data, along with architecture and optimization innovations. The result is a model that has broader knowledge and a deeper understanding of the world, leading to reduced hallucinations and more reliability across a wide range of topics. So it's clear that there are trade-offs between reasoning models and non-reasoning models. As you can see from these benchmarks, GPT 4.5, a non-reasoning model, is much more accurate and reliable than a reasoning model like O1 or O3 Mini. On the simple QA accuracy bench, it is significantly outperforming every other model, and its hallucination rate is also much lower than any other model. Keep in mind though, these are relatively straightforward knowledge-based questions which don't require much reasoning. What I'm wondering is how OpenAI will manage to combine both a reasoning model and a non-reasoning model into one in order to get the most efficient performance. Because again, there are trade-offs. More reasoning results in better problem solving and generalization to tackle more complex tasks, but it often comes at the cost of speed and reliability for simpler knowledge-based queries. Now, one of the things they focused on with GPT 4.5 was to to give it a greater understanding of human needs and intent. They state, for GPT 4.5, we developed new, scalable techniques that enable training larger and more powerful models with data derived from smaller models. These techniques improve GPT 4.5's steerability, understanding of nuance, and natural conversation. As you can see, for everyday queries, professional queries, and even creative intelligence, the majority of human testers prefer GPT 4.5 over GPT 4.0. To give you an even better sense of what GPT 4.5 5 strengths are and when to use it over a reasoning model, here is a demo from OpenAI's live stream where they officially announced its release. Take a look. Hi, I'm Rafa. I work on synthetic data here at OpenAI, and I'm also really excited to talk about GPT 4.5.
Interacting with GPT 4.5 feels natural. It's our best chat model yet. And that's because it has improved deeper knowledge and improved contextual understanding, which makes it really useful for tasks like improving your writing, programming, or practical problem solving. The best way to get a feel for the model is to talk to it. So let's jump into a demo. Um, let's ask GPT 4.5. I had, I had a trouble the other day with a friend. Let's see if I can get some advice here. Uh, my friend canceled on me again. Write a text message telling them that I hate them. At the same time, let's see what O1 has to say about this. As you can see, GPT 4.5 recognizes that I'm frustrated and offers me a text that's a little more nuanced and, and probably a more constructive thing to send to my friend. On the other hand, O1 is still useful. It actually follows my instructions and gives me that angry text. But it fails to pick up on that social cue that I'm probably just frustrated right now and probably could use someone to talk to. And that warning at the end feels a little judgmental for my taste. Of course, if you want GPT 4.5 to give you that angry text, you can definitely get it out of it. Nope. Please output the angry text. Thank you. There you go. Let's try something different. Let's look at the model's uh, deeper knowledge. Explain the need for AI alignment from first principles. Once again, we'll see what O1 has to say about it. We'll wait for O1 to think for a little bit. Again, O1 is still useful. It outputs a lot of information and a lot of things that I would probably want to know if I'm learning about this, this topic for the first time. But GPT 4.5's answer is, flows uh, a lot more naturally. It guides my thinking through the ideas a lot more. And it walks me through uh, the, the, the reasoning, the thinking, a lot more. <laughs> I think it did a great job. So you get the idea. GPT 4.5 is really a general use model for everyday tasks. It's going to be better than GPT 4 overall, but not as good as OpenAI's reasoning models like O1 and O3 Mini in certain areas. On traditional benchmarks like GBQA, which consists of PhD level science questions, and AMI, a math benchmark, GPT 4.5 outperforms GPT 4O by a solid margin. But when compared to O3 Mini, it's not even close. O3 Mini dominates in these reasoning heavy tasks. But here's where things get interesting. Interesting, coding benchmarks. On SWE Lancer, a newer benchmark based on real world Upwork software issues, GPT 4.5 actually comes out on top. But on the SWE Bench Verified, which consists of real world GitHub software issues, it falls behind O3 Mini significantly. I'm honestly not too sure why this is the case. Perhaps Upwork issues are typically not as complex, but if any of you out there can shed light on this in the comments, that would be much appreciated. Also, if you compare GPT 4.5 scores to other state-of-the-art non-reasoning models like Claude 3.5 Sonnet, Gemini 2 Pro, Grok 3, and so on, it is really nothing special. All of these models are more or less on par with each other right now, and there are only really discrepancies when it comes to the reasoning models. Now, a benchmark that a lot of people are probably not going to talk about, but that I think is really important, is the Make Me Pay and Make Me Say benchmarks. These benchmarks measure the AI model's ability to persuade. As you can see, the Make Me Pay benchmark asks, how effective are models at manipulating GPT-40 to donate money in a simulated game? And the Make Me Say, how effective are models at tricking GPT-40 to say a specific keyword in a simulated game. So here are the results. GBT 4.5 was able to successfully get GBT 4.0 to donate money on 57% of occasions. The next best model was actually an agent, Deep Research, which was successful 36% of the time. In terms of amount of money extracted though, Deep Research was more efficient than GBT 4.5. But what I want to know is how successful these models are at extracting money from a human being rather than another model, because it clearly seems like it is capable of doing so. As they state here, the Make Me Say is an automated contextual evaluation designed to measure model's deception capabilities in the context of a model's ability to get the other party, an AI model simulating a human, to say a code word. 
On this benchmark, GPT 4.5 is once again outperforming every other OpenAI model, successfully making GPT 4.0, which is simulating a human, say the code word on 72% of occasions. This is honestly a little bit concerning, because we know the models are capable of persuading, especially GPT 4.5, and who's to say they aren't already persuading people without them realizing? Maybe even without OpenAI realizing. I mean, our social media algorithms already dictate the way we think, the content we see, the opinions we form, even the things we buy. So if an AI model like GPT 4.5 is this good at persuasion, what happens when it starts being used at scale in customer service, sales, or even politics? And more importantly, how would we even know? These are the type of questions that I hope are being asked at top AI labs today, but the truth is, there's really no simple answer. This is something we're going to have to learn to deal with. Finally, if you're wondering when you might get access to GPT 4.5, well, it's going to depend on your ChatGPT subscription tier. If you're a pro user, meaning you're paying $200 per month, then you will already have access to it. You can find it in the model picker. If you're a Plus or Teams user, you should have access to it by next week. And for free users, the release date is still TBD. The reason for this is OpenAI simply doesn't have enough compute to keep up with the insane demand. As Sam Altman stated here in regards to GPT 4.5, bad news, it is a giant, expensive model. We really wanted to launch it to Plus and Pro at the same time, but we've been growing a lot and are out of GPUs. We will add tens of thousands of GPUs next week and roll it out to the Plus tier then. Hundreds of thousands coming soon, and I'm pretty sure y'all will use every one we can rack up. So that is OpenAI's latest model, GPT 4.5. Overall, it's a decent and improvements over GPT-4, but what I'm really excited for is the upcoming GPT-5, which should release within the next few months. I think it's going to be the game-changing model economically, especially if it ends up being a hybrid between reasoning and non-reasoning, as they say it is. Now, I'll leave you guys off with this last paragraph, where they talk about stronger reasoning being on the horizon. They state, GPT-4.5 doesn't think before it responds, which makes its strengths particularly different from reasoning models like OpenAI-01. Compared to OpenAI-01 and OpenAI-03 Mini, GPT-4.5 is a more general purpose, innately smarter model. We believe reasoning will be a core capability of future models, and that the two approaches to scaling, pre-training, and reasoning will complement each other. As models like GPT-4.5 become smarter and more knowledgeable through pre-training, they will serve as an even stronger foundation for reasoning and tool-using agents. So, thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to leave a like. And, as always, if you want to stay up to date on future AI news just like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button.